different groups have different gifts, different sexes have different gifts, and probably different political orientations have different gifts. For law enforcement and for military, a, a more traditional perspective is going to be most advantageous. For those who put their lives on the line for protection or for service of the country, these are people who are going to put a great premium on honor. And I don't think there is a concept of honor in liberalism. And what are the fundamental liberal texts that put a premium on honor? So I was looking back through Ronnie Goodman's work in progress, Conservative Claims of Cultural Oppression. And he talks about Sergeant Bergdahl. Remember, Sergeant Bergdahl wandered off his base in Afghanistan, and the Biden administration was blindsided right, by the outrage provoked by his decision to release five terrorist prisoners in exchange for the return of Sergeant Bergdahl, who deserted his post in Afghanistan before being captured by Taliban. And the administration's surprise reflected a fundamental culture clash. Right, The administration had contempt for Americans who'd be so dumb as to join the military rather than going to Harvard. And Obama's national security advisor, Susan Rice, praised Sergeant Bergdahl for serving with honor and distinction. Right? She failed to appreciate that desertion is among the very worst transgressions a soldier can commit against his comrades. Comrades, it's not like sleeping in on a Monday morning and ducking Gender Studies 101 class. Right? The problem wasn't just the strategic wisdom of the prisoner exchange, or it's the cultural values which it ratified. It was the imposition of liberal values to the detriment of military virtue and honor. To say that Sergeant Bergdahl, who wandered off his assignment, served with honor and distinction is obscene for anyone with a traditional conception of honor. There was a United States Supreme Court ruling on United States versus Virginia, which held that it was unconstitutional for the Virginia Military Institute to have a policy of excluding women. And uh, Justice Antonin Scalia wrote in the minority opinion, it is precisely BMI, Virginia Military Institute's attachment to old-fashioned concepts such as manly honor that has made it the targets of those who want to abolish public single-sex education. So the liberal justices and the majority justices just assumed the technocrat position, just scrutinizing the facts, you know, how much evidence is required to prove that women cannot adapt to a Virginia Military Institute education. But the, the true stakes, right, for those who aren't liberal, all right, refer to concepts such as honor, right? It's not about uprooting irrational preconceptions about women's capabilities. It's not about advancing. It is about advancing an agenda of social engineering to discredit ideals such as honor that the dominant liberal left elite regard as archaic and benighted. Manly honor is incompatible with the liberal left hygienic conception of life. On the other hand, for public health and probably for a lot of medicine, a liberal left hygienic conception of life is a great idea. All right, liberals dismiss manly honor. They think it's sexist and, and racist and contributes to gender inequality, right? But uh, it's, it's male individuality. It's male exuberance, male aggressiveness, male concepts of honor that uh, from the left's perspective must be stringently curved and disciplined to meet the requirements of bureaucratic success. So if you want to succeed in most bureaucracies, it strongly helps to have a liberal left hygienic conception of life. So bureaucracies tend to enable the comfort of the effete and the androgynous male who fits the feminist model of manhood. Right? Liberals tend to oppose manly honor, not so much to promote gender equality, but just as part of their primordial attraction to the disciplined conformism of an institutional bureaucratic ethos, right? The hygienic conception of life cannot tolerate male individualism, exuberance, and aggressiveness, right? These are all primitive virtues that uh, threaten our rational social order. So equal protection review is merely the ideological facade behind which liberalism targets these traditional virtues.